and welcome to this video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how I fill in my brows and then the um, eyeshadow. So for my brows, I um, always use the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade and I use it in shade Chocolate. So what I tend to do is, um, so I brush my brows up and just sort of brush them into the shape that they should be or that they are. I like to take a small angled liner brush, dip it into the product, and then um, I just tend to follow the under shape of my eyebrows. Now this all depends on what shape of brows you want, how full or unfull your brows are. Um, so yeah, that all kind of depends on what sort of shape you go for. I tend to, I'm quite lucky, like my brows are fairly full. Um, this one's probably a better brow than this one. So I tend to just do that and then I will just make them slightly bit bigger than what they actually are just because I prefer the fuller brow look. And then basically from where your hair starts to grow sort of in that direction I feel the product on top of my hair in that direction and then at the front where your brows grow up that's when I start to feel the product up just because this helps with keeping them look a little bit natural if you're not going against any of the grain and um, it helps fill it in better as well. One, I tend to just follow where my hair is, lightly draw up little hair like strokes if I can sometimes, and then just kind of try and stay in the shape of the brow. So we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other brow and just remember your brows are meant to be sisters not twins um, just purely because for me personally my natural brows are basically almost two completely different brows so trying to get them to look exactly the same is almost impossible I mean I've tried so many different things um, I can get them near enough to be the same but there's always just that little slight difference which does get really annoying. However, like I've just said, I personally also need to remember my brows are sisters and not twins. So we're just gonna fill in the other brow. Typically like to use a flat ended flat top brush and just dab it into a concealer and then carve out the shape of the brow and sort of covering up any of your mistakes that you've made or anywhere you've got lines out of place. And then to help blend in the concealer just so there's not such harsh lines it's time to get a mini beauty blender and just dab it in like we've done with our concealer on our face just going to go in and set our brows with a clear brow gel this then just helps to keep them tamed and in place throughout the whole day so I'm just going to use this um, collection 2000 brow gel and literally we're just going to apply it like it was mascara but onto our brows instead so the next step is eyeshadow I'm going to be using a combination of the two Sophie X uh, Makeup Revolution palettes. Um, the first one, which is just the, I believe it's just the first Sophie X 
Ultra Eyeshadows palette, yeah. It's going to go in and when I can open it. Oh. Just going to use this shade here as a base colour. So I'm just going to use a fluffy blender brush, just dab it in and take off the excess. And then I typically do this just so then this helps blend in the concealer um, lines from your brows, if you have any. And also it just works as a base for you to place your um, eyeshadow colours on. I'm going to go in with is this shade over here these don't actually have any names so it doesn't really help or well, they did and i lost the name part of it so this now so as um if you've watched uh, previous videos of mine you'll know that i do have um hooded eyes which then basically means i have to bring all my eyeshadow up higher than my natural crease line in order for it to be seen when my eyes are open so after I so after I've placed my base color, whatever shade I'm going to then use, I do tend to put it looking down up here above my crease line, just then that this sort of creates a full crease line and makes your eyeshadow available visible throughout the whole day. So going in with the extra spice palette. I'm going to be using the shade Cheesecake just here. I'm going to just then place this on top of the shade that we've just placed above our crease line. I'm just going to use circular motions to begin with and then backwards and forwards motions. This just helps with the blending of the shadows so that you don't get them choppy, look, choppy lines. That I do tend to get sometimes. If we're brush, this is a Sephora um, bullet crease brush. I'm gonna go in with this darker shade Enchanted from the Extra Spice palette, and I'm just gonna put that. Just gonna put that in the outer corners of our eyes. Again, making sure to fill in above the natural crease line. Just gonna blend it out with a, a blender brush, put on a little bit more product just to help blend it better, get rid of any sort of lines or um, harsh lines if you've got any. And then you wanna start bringing it in the corner of your under under your lash line just to basically match the bottom of your eyes with the top of your eyes giving it that more seamless finish with the darker shades you don't necessarily want to bring them all the way to the front of your under lash line especially if you have small eyes just because it can make them look smaller. However, if you do have big eyes and you want to make them look a bit smaller, then that's a good thing to do. And you'll probably find it's better to put the darker shades in the center or the, corner, the inner corner of your eyes than it is to do on the outside. And also if you have close set eyes as well, it's the best thing to put them on the darker shade on the outside. And if you have wide set eyes, you need to put the darker shades on the inside. This just gives them the illusion that they are closer together. Now, just using a flat brush, I'm going to pick up um, this shade Dream. I'm going to put some of that on the brush. And as this is a shimmery um, sort of shade, I'm going to use a bit of the setting spray. Just because these sort of shimmer glitter sprays work better and have a lot less fallout once they are a bit tacky and wet. And I'm just going to place this in the inner corners where there's only that base colour. So our next step will be lashes. And the 
best thing to do is before you put on your lashes is to first curl your natural ones using a natural uh, a lash curler just give it a couple of squeezes on each eye and then just get a mascara and place some mascara on your lashes <clears throat> And you typically want to put mascara on your natural lashes before you put the fake ones on just because this then helps with your natural and your strips blending together and also the less um, mascara you have to put on your lashes the better and longer that they last the idea to do is if you're a beginner with lashes is maybe getting a liquid liner and just lining above your lash line this will then help with the um, blending in the lashes and making them look more natural when they're on so we're just going to lightly pull on the eye and draw a thin line above just above our lash line so just going to use these eye viewer lashes in uh, number one two six definition maybe i think that's their name yeah just these ones i have worn these a few times so what we're going to do is take the package out and just because obviously i've worn them a few times they are a bit loose but you just want to make sure when you do take them out that you gently take it from one side and then from the other side. Oh, let's stick together. You'll need to cut them to length. Um, and always make sure you don't really cut off from the inside. You want to cut off from the outer corners. Just because otherwise you can tend to lose the shape a bit. And also you'll end up with like longer bits at the front when you don't really need to. And it just won't be comfortable. Um, a thick or a thin band, it's really up to you. I really don't have a preference. I tend to go more for the style that I like which you also need to find out what works for you what you like I do like the dramatic look and the long lashes and um, these ones in particular have like a, a fairly thick band like a, a thick ish band as you can see and it's going to take a little while to get used to the feeling of them and also to putting them on. Um, I have made a lot of mistakes in my time and, you know, never stuck them close enough to the lash line. So you'd always see my natural ones and then you'd see the strip and yeah, just not a good look. It just takes a lot of practice. So along the band, just be careful you don't get it on the lashes. And then I have to get a mirror for this just because I need a very close up look. Angle them up slightly and drop it where you want them. And make sure that they are as close to your lash line and where we've drawn that line of liquid liner as well just because this will give you more of the natural look once they're on. And you're better off sticking the corners first and then just going in, pushing into your lashes, but also pushing them, the fake ones and your real ones together so that they stick. You can do this with your tweezers as well, but just be careful you don't stab your eye because that's just painful. Or even pinching your eyelids off. And you'll find after a while, of wearing um, a particular lash they will contour to the shape of your eyes and then they'll just get easier and easier to put on it's the first few times that they are a little harder which is why i had a bit of an issue i've only worn these lashes about 
three times, I think. I have got others, which I probably should have used, where they are contoured to the shape of my eye. I also wouldn't advise going too cheap when buying your lashes, just purely because they can be so plastic and so hard to work with. And sometimes they are stuck to the packaging all the way around. So by the time you've got them off, they're ripped in the middle or it's just not good. So you're better off paying a little bit extra and then just practicing, putting them on and off, just being gentle as anything. And then they'll last longer as well. And make sure you clean the glue off the band. That is very important because after a while they'll just be really chunky and it just won't look nice. And now we will just be finishing off by putting on mascara on the bottom line, lash line. And then also I just tend to do a little bit just to finally just do the finishing, sticking it all together going to put on some white eyeliner on the waterline this then just helps with opening up the eyes however if you wanted it to be a purely dark really dark smoky eye look then you're better off putting on a darker eyeliner black um like a dark color even like a darky dark like maroon color if you wanted it to match with your eyeshadow however just for this for today i'm going to be putting on a white eyeliner And as you'll see now, this makes your eyes look slightly bigger. Again, this is more for people like me who have small hooded eyes. If you've got bigger eyes, unless you want to make them look bigger, I wouldn't suggest putting on white eyeliner just because it helps obviously open them up. So you might want to go in with a darker colour. Normally for a look like this, I would apply a um, nude or a pink coloured lipstick just to offset the look because it is a dark eye look. But today, um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to um, try a darker colour just to show you little tips and tricks that I've learned on how to use, wear dark coloured lipsticks and make them look quite clean and tidy and keep them in place. Don't want um, it to be obvious that we are wearing a lip liner. The um, lip liner is going to be an almost identical colour to the lipstick. lipstick this is the shade contention from makeup revolution so we're just going to start in the middle and go along lip brush you can then grab the concealer that you've used earlier and then just lightly go around bits where you still just a little bit untidy and then you can just carve out your lipstick like you did with your brows see with a um, dark matte look like this I like to put a bit of a gloss on top so I will be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills vamp lip gloss and a little trick is I like to just put it in the center of the lips just then this gives the illusion of a fuller looking lip so now our last step is going to be setting the face with a setting spray and here is the final look. I hope you like this look. It is a very autumn-y, Halloween-y inspired look. And um, yeah, so I really like it. I'm happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys are too. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. And I hope that this video and my previous video have helped you if you are just starting your journey out into makeup or even if you are well on your way and you just needed a couple of tips and tricks along the way. If you like this video, then hopefully give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and hopefully I will see you in my next one. Bye!